Hey guys, welcome to Everlast Welders channel. My name is Lisa Watson and you probably know me as I am Gold Welder on Instagram. I'm a TIG welder and fabricator with nine years of experience in automotive industry. Mostly I build titanium and stainless exhaust system for like supercars and race cars. And I specialized on some aluminum stuff like intercoolers, air to water intercoolers and stuff like that. In these episodes, we're going to talk about some basics, how to work with different materials like stainless, titanium, and aluminum. So let's go. Okay, first thing first, we need to set up our TIG torch. Today we're going to use this uh, WP20 Nova torch. Uh, it's a water-cooled uh, TIG torch. And I'm going to show you just a basic setup that I like to use for basically everything except aluminum. And right now we're going to start with some uh, stainless piping. So I like to use uh, CK Worldwide gas lens. This one is for uh, 332nd tungsten. Just one moment. Put it there. Make it tight. Then call it. And I like to use a CK middle size, like a medium size um, back cup. I don't like the long one. It's just annoying. It's always on my way. And I like 2% lanthanated tungsten. It's pretty universal for like everything. I use it for every materials that I work with. And the main thing for um, stainless is cup. So I like to use this uh, 15 cup from Edge and I need a special adapter for it. And this is the adapter for the glass cup. Just put it on the gas lens, easy peasy. And then you can just change your um, glass cups easily, just like that. Let's talk about stick out. So um, like perfectly, it should be uh, the same length as a diameter of a cup. So for example, if it's a 15 cup, it has to be 15 sixteenths of an inch. So something like a you know square right here. But sometimes you have to like stick it out farther because you need to reach something deeper. That way you need to turn up your CFH, of course, because you need more gas flow. But for like a regular work, uh, same diameter as the cup you use. And right now uh, we're going to work with some uh, two and a half inch OD stainless tube uh, and it's uh, 065. Uh, wall thickness and it should be three or four uh, stainless steel. So let's set up the machine. I'm going to show you what settings I use for stainless steel. So today we're going to use this uh, Typhoon 330 and I'm going to show you what setups I usually use. So let's see what it has. So uh, pre flow is good. It's one second and it's really important for stainless steel and titanium. Uh, start amps. It doesn't really matter for me, but just Keep it here. Amps, it's okay to run uh, 150 because I'm going to use foot pedal to control uh, amps and process. And the main thing is the post flow. So eight seconds, it's pretty good for stainless. I would do maybe like seven. It's not that important. I want to show you some basics uh, how you can prepare your uh, tube before you weld anything. And it doesn't really matter what material you use. It's very important. So first thing first, you need to make it square after you cut it. Then use file to deburr edges outside and inside. And then just file the face of it. It's really important too. After that, take scotch bright and scotch bright it outside and inside and then take some paper towel and acetone. It's very important and only after that you can start welding the part you're working on. And also don't forget to make sure you guys wipe off your filler road with acetone before you weld anything because I'm going to show you how it looks. This is just straight from the box and this is what you're going to have in your weld and it can it can cause some problems because stainless steel doesn't like any dirt and also please 
clean up your table and don't have any oil or grease or whatever it can be around your welding table, it's very important because TIG welding requires clean working space. So now I'm going to tuck these parts together. Uh, you need to make sure before you tuck anything that it's lined up very well. So there is no gaps, uh, it's not offset, it should be really nice, square and tight. It's important for not really thick materials. For thick materials, it's a different story. We're talking about some like exhaust uh, tubes and elbows and stuff like that. So usually what I do, I tuck with back perch, but this time it's just for the video. So I'm going to put two small tucks without any purging inside. <clears throat> Just eyeball it, nice and square. Okay, I really like to weld uh, in like a, this kind of like a drill, uh, drill mill vise. It's very easy because it holds my part and it doesn't rolling on the floor. And so let's do uh, first thing. It's really interesting. So I'm going to uh, make a pass. There is no back perch inside. And I'm going to show, show you what's happening without any back perch. And I'm going to, once I finish my pass, I take away the torch right away and you will see what's going to happen and why it's important to have post flow for stainless steel. Check this out. So this is basically what happens uh, when you take your torch right away from the weld because it has to be cooled off in argon because this is the oxidation that you don't want to see on your stainless steel. You see it's kind of grayish, but don't forget because I have really nice and big cup, that's why it's not as bad. If you would use like a six or seven um, size cup, it's going to be much worse. It's going to be like fully gray. So you don't want to have that. And plus, because I was welding without back perch, I had problems um, with controlling uh, the pedal because when you have gas inside, it's much easier to control stainless steel because when it, it's not perched from the inside, it's really hard to control it. And let me show you why. Okay, guys, so what we see inside is uh, basically like a sugar or it's a contamination. So what happens when you weld without any back perch, uh, when you weld stainless steel without any back perch, you get this uh, like a gray stuff inside. So it means that you burnt out uh, the chrome that actually is main ingredient that makes stainless steel stainless steel. So and now it's not there anymore, it's bur burnt out and it's going to rust and it's going to crack um, in this place. So don't do it like that. And plus, when you have this uh, like a burning out uh, chrome inside your pipe, it's very hard to control the bottle from the outside because it's all boiling together inside. So now I'm going to show you proper way how to weld stainless steel tubing. Okay, guys. Now I'm purging the part. Uh, so basically I like to use something about like 15, 10 to 15 CFH. And um, I run it for like maybe 20 to 30 seconds. So it's going to push out all the oxygen from the inside. So I think we should be good to go so you can actually feel it. That it's coming out. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how it's going to look with back purge.
uh, so the main thing that I want to say that the results that you get uh, really depends on the quality of stainless steel you have because today we don't have really good one. It's still, well, it's pretty bad and hard. So, but at the same time, it's not as bad as it could be, honestly. Anyway, so let's take this off and see what we got inside. So guys, as you can see, now it's nice and gold inside and you can actually see the beads. And this is how the good quality weld, even with not the nicest material we have, should look like. And also, do you see that black dot inside in the, in the root? So basically, this is the tag that I made without back perch. So that's why I highly recommend to tag with back perch before you weld anything. This is very important. That way you can get really nice, like full pan, like the stars of Instagram have, um, you know, on their products and stuff that they weld. So this is very important. And for some people who don't know, because people ask me that question, what gas you use to back perch? We use argon, of course, same gas as we use for our um, outside protection. Okay, guys, let's finalize what we have here. So the first weld was done in a poor way, and the second weld was done properly the way it has to be done every time when you work with stainless steel. So this one, this is the first one. It looks pretty bad. It's gray. Inside, it's a lot of contamination. That's why it's really hard to control it. And the second one looks much better, more stable outside. And the main thing, it was back perch from the inside. And don't forget, to purge your tags. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to weld stainless steel on positioner. It's a completely different story. So stay tuned, subscribe the channel and see you in the next video.